Welcome to our digital worship for Sunday, May 29th. This is the final Sunday in the season of Easter. So we come to the end of one of the major seasons of, of the church year. Next year, next week will be the beginning of the season of Pentecost. But as we begin our worship this morning, I ask you to join with me in a brief word of confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin and uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of the world our heart may be fixed where our true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God! who proclaimed the way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews, 
and are advocating customs that are not lawful to us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prisoner's doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights. And rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At that same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 97. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his, thr of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshipers of image are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. The, guard, the guards, he guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Our second reading is from Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Christ says, See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with a testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendants of David, the bright morning star. The spirit of the bride says, come. And let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty Come, let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, 
but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundations of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. In the midst of all these gifts you give us, may we share that which w with which we've been blessed. May we live in your hope, in your peace, and in your presence. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.
So I'm convinced that about 90% of modern interpreters of Revelation get it completely backwards. Again, anytime somebody takes this book and makes it into something to fear, I believe they've gotten it backwards. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a good horror story. I love a good horror movie. I love something that scares me a little bit. But that's not what Revelation is. It's a book of hope. It's a book of longing. It's a book of hoping for the way in which the world can be. And again, so many of the things that we focus in on are the book of Revelation's way of saying, yes, this is the brokenness of the world. This is a way of naming and poetically talking about it. And it is there and it's real and it hurts, but it's not ultimate. It's not the end. You know, I... I have been doing my own personal study on the book of Judges. And the book of Judges is a book of brokenness. It is a book where, you know, you see the limits of what people are going to do on their own and the way in which there is this turning to that which is easy and away from the way of God. And I don't think that we've changed all that much over the last couple thousand years. I just don't. I, I know there are a lot of people who believe in, in human potential. I am, I am very pessimistic about what we as humans do on our own. I'm very optimistic about what can be done in Christ, but I am very pessimistic about what we as humans do on our own. I think that there is a reason that we pray for God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven because the reality is the way that we do it, we are really good at making hell on earth. We are really good at tearing people down. We are really good at killing. We are really good at not caring what happens to my neighbor so long as I'm safe. We're really good at a lot of things that don't make for good community, don't make for good life, don't make for happiness or joy or peace. We're really good at a lot of just the opposite things. Now, maybe people think I'm being too hard on, on humanity. And maybe my mind has been shaped by, by a love of history, but also just a reality about the, the way in which we've treated those who we have enabled as our enemies. You know, you can look at pictures like this, uh, like pictures of Dresden from World War II, or pictures like Kiev from, from right now. And it doesn't have to be these grand, big, warlike times. You know, there are lots of things that we do that don't make life better. And I do feel often powerless to be able to change that. You know, one of the things I like to do is I do go to the gym. I do like to, uh, to lift weights. I'm not a person who is a power lifter by any stretch. But I do enjoy it. But if you keep putting on the bar that I'm going to lift or press, if you keep putting on the 45-pound plates, I'm not going to be able to, be, to move it. I just don't have that ability. I don't have that strength. That's not who I am. I've not done the work to be that. You know, maybe somebody can. You know, you put on three or four 44, five pound weights on each side and they can pick that up. They can be that power lifter. They can be that person, you know. That's not me. Nor is that who I've tried to be. But I do feel like the weight of the world gets very heavy. I do feel like the weight of the way in which things are gets oppressively heavy and it feels hopeless at times.
And yet, I want this little light of mine to shine. I don't want it to blow out. And part of it is I need to be able to say, this is what I can do. You know, I think one of the one of the things of our modern age has been that, you know, we can bring in the kingdom of God on our own. We can make the world right. We can fix it. Now, there are things that have been helped. And there are things that have not been helped. And that, I think, is why, you know, we have this idea of God's kingdom coming where God's kingdom comes and God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven and it is that hope of the early early Christians Lord Jesus come you know if you were listening to this uh, reading from Revelation how many times the word come comes up and the spirit and the bride says come you know and all those who are gathered say, come, let those come and who have washed their robes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. You know, it is that desire for this to come and not as a thing that you know, we get to sit and watch all the, the horror movie on hold, but instead it's come, let's live in a world make right. You know, and I love, again, Luther, you know, when we teach the catechism, there is this uh, part where we talk about the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And, and Luther says, you know, God's kingdom comes on its own without our working. But we pray in this prayer that it also comes in us. You know, that that little light that we carry out into the world is a part of what God is doing. It's a little bit of that kingdom going out there. And me carrying a candle doesn't make much difference. We carrying candles does. This little light of mine, I want to let it shine. But I want to let it shine with your light and your light and your light and your light and your light. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. And let it be a small sign of that which we hope for. May it be a part of that indwelling of, of Christ in us. You know, this whole piece of the John reading, I and you and you and them and they and us, you know, it's this whole Christ indwelling in us and the love of God indwelling in us and us being, because of that, different. But I also think that there is something more than just what we take from this place out into the world. And we do pray for the world to be put right, for God to be a part of this world, for God to be with us and dwell with us and live with us, to wipe away our tears, to heal the nations, to give us the water of life, to bleach our robes, to forgive our sins, to, to allow us to live in the way that we were created to live. And we're not there yet. And so that's why we pray. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. May we be your guest in this household that you are creating on earth, in this kingdom that you bring to be among us, in this city where the river rose, flows through it and the trees of life grow on each side, in this place where tears are wiped away and death and crying and grief are no more. In this place where you are at the center 
and every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. To this place where we share in this great banquet with all of creation and everybody has enough and there's enough for everyone to eat good food. Well-aged wine strained clear. Meats and well-aged and and cheese and bread and and there is enough in God's kingdom that comes when God's will is done. And our desire is that it would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thanks be to God. Amen. I ask you to join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we lift up this world that you love. Renew your creation and give wisdom to all your people who share in your responsibility to care for the world. Give wisdom to the leaders of nations, states, and cities to care for your people in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For countries of the world experience disunity and conflict, we set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Protect and bless all who sacrifice to guard our freedoms, including Ben, Bryson, Christian, Clayton, Daniel, Dylan, Hayden, Luke, Michael, Spencer, Sidney, Tyler B., and Tyler G. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We lift up before you Aaron, Avery, Aubrey, Austin, Betsy, Billy, Bob D, Bob S, Brandy, Brenda, Krista, Cohen, Dan, Darla, Dave, Deanne, Dorothy, Eliza, Francis, Jamie, Jan, Jerry K, Jerry N, Kathy, Kelly, Ken, Lori, Linda, Michaela, Matt, Maureen, Michelle, Mike, Mick, Patrick, Pete. Sandy, Scott, Shay, Susan, Tom, and Vim, and the friends and family of Caleb Edwards and Tanya Erdman. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ministries of the ELCA in the Northern Texas and Northern Louisiana Synod. We also lift up in prayer today Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Shreveport, Redeemer Lutheran Church in Greenville, and the Conference out West. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In trust and in hope, we commend you, O Lord, all for whom we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you as you gather together with your friends and family at home. So just a very few real quick announcements. So just a reminder that the uh, ninth Annual Memorial Golf Scramble is coming up on June 12th. If you're interested in that, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to get you signed up for that. Um, Empty Nesters is getting together on June 10th at Eddie's Na Napoli of Prosper. And um, we will have uh, an opportunity to serve out at Samaritan Inn. If you're interested in that, uh, that'll be on June 5th. If you're interested in that, please reach out to me, and I'll be happy to get you connected with the people who are leading that as well. All right. Um, this is also the part of the service where we would collect our offering. And so I want to thank you for your continued faithfulness. You have made our ministry here at Rejoice possible. You've allowed myself and Pastor Adam to do the work that we do. Uh, you've made these videos possible. You've made... You've made this ministry possible, so so thank you for your support. Um, if you want to support Rejoice, you can either uh, send a check to our physical address at 12,000 Independence Parkway in Frisco, Texas, uh, 75035. Uh, there is the Tithely option, which you can download the Tithely app and then select Rejoice Lutheran Church of Frisco, Texas, or you can use the Give Now button on, on our website, which also connects with Tithely, but it, it is also another way of, of doing that online. Uh, so again, thank you. Thank you for the way in which you make this possible. 
Now I invite you to gather together bread and wine as we prepare to celebrate uh, communion. Communion is a central part of our worship here at Rejoice. It's a place where we trust that Christ meets us. We gather together and we remember how in the night in which he was betrayed, how our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, with this meal you have united us with Christ and also with each other. Send us now in the power of your spirit that we may reflect your love to the world through the power of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and grant us peace.
God has claimed us as his own in Christ, we seek to follow Christ with these marks of disciple life. Praying daily, worshiping weekly, studying the Bible, serving others, building spiritual friendships, giving to God and our neighbors in need, engaging God's mission. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.